I've been hunting my whole life. I've been studying animals' behavior and communication for over 30 years. And about two decades ago, I founded a company, Illusion, to create game call systems so you could talk to animals. And now, it's time to share that information. Welcome to Deer Society's Calling Tips. So once you get control of your call and you understand the amount of air pressure it takes to make it work at the different settings, you've really come a long way to having competence in the field and being able to jump from one thing to another and create different types of vocabulary and actually have a conversation with these deer and manipulate them with communication. And that's really the key to success. So let's get into, we did a little bit of the fawn, we've done a little bit of the doe now. This is all about technique now. And now we're gonna get into the buck. Now, the extinguisher is set up so that it doesn't have a real loud, aggressive buck sound. And there's a reason for that. The reason is, is because you don't want to be the biggest, baddest, burliest, loudest, craziest sounds out into the woods unless you're specifically trying to be that, okay? If you have a call, and almost all grunt calls out there, just about all of them, are 10 times louder than they should be, and they're probably too deep and too aggressive than they should be. And you're gonna be pushing and bumping deer, or you're gonna be making deer not think that they have the upper hand on the other deer if you do a challenge sequence. So that's why we designed it that way. It's, it's all about strategy, it's all about how deer react to you, and it's all about how you communicate. So now you need to have the proper technique to make sure that you're doing the right things at the right time and saying the right things and coming off as uh, a deer that they're willing to react to. So with that being said, we have the buck setting and I typically go down to the bottom. That's the best thing to do. When you're using your call and you know you want to do a buck sound and no matter where it's set, slide it down to the bottom. And if you want to go up just a little bit higher, you know it's going to be a little bit younger deer or a little bit different vocalization. So just keep that in mind. Same thing with a doe. If you're gonna make a doe sound, slide it all the way up and just come down a little bit and you know you're gonna be in there. You don't have to look at it, you don't have to adjust it by sight. You'll know you're there by starting at the top and going down or starting at the bottom and going up. So we're gonna start at the bottom with our buck call and we're just gonna start out, let's just say a, a simple contact grunt once again. Start the airflow into the call slow to try and get that reed to vibrate and then control it from there. The very beginning of the note, I'm actually putting air through the call for a split second before it starts to actually react to the airflow. Okay, keep that in mind. Don't come in hard with air on that call. Come in low and work it up as real slightly as you can to get the call working properly. That's going to give you the right tone and the right volume and that's the key to this thing. That way you're controlling it. Once again, that's a monotone sound. You notice as I increase the air pressure, I get a little bit of pitch change into it. That's without any inflection. So you want to use that to your advantage along with the inflection to make your grunt sounds like a contact grunt. See, the thing of it is, is if you practice and you know exactly how much air pressure it takes to get that call to start making the sound, then you can go to a precision note and you can make it quick, short, whatever you want. You can go louder. Now there's some variation. Now, let's talk a little bit about buck sounds and variation and technique when it comes to that. Now, you just saw a bunch of different things that I just did there. I did a quick little grunt. I did a monotone grunt. I did a grunt that had some higher pitch with airflow, which really increased the volume is what was happening there. But if you want to learn how to control your call with inflection and with volume, you have to be able to control the airflow and you have to be able to control your hand and understand how much pressure to put on that reed to get those sounds. I hate to be a broken record, but that takes practice. So 
Let's do some buck sounds. Here's some different variations of buck sounds with simple grunts. <laughs> So I'm starting out, getting it going, I'm opening up, I'm increasing the volume a little bit, and that gives me a little bit of emotion. It gives me a little bit of aggressiveness, so maybe I'm a little worked up. Now if I don't add any more air pressure, it's just going to be... You can tell, that's less emotion. This is more emotion. So I'm adding that air pressure when I release that note, starting deep with the chambering, adding the air pressure, and that's how you control that call. Now let's get into another buck sound, let's, uh, a breeding grunt. And that takes a lot of air volume, but it takes a lot of control with the amount of air pressure, okay? So I'm starting out with a deep breath, a lot of air volume in my lungs, and I'm starting out with a slow air pressure, and as I release and I open, you'll see a higher pitch, you'll get more volume, you'll get that aggressiveness, and then I come back down, okay? And it's kind of like this. Once again, you're starting natural, you get up, now you're gonna and actually get a distortion on the reed. So you're getting a distorted sound at its peak because I'm putting that much air pressure on it. And then I start backing the air pressure down as I chamber and close down and you'll get that mellow, deeper, kind of, kind of burly grunt at a finish. And that's, that's a typical breeding grunt. Once again, practice this stuff, okay? Now, we talked about the breeding grunt and the call started to peak out and I put an extra air pressure and I could feel some of that, that distortion in the call, okay? You want to be able to control that. You want to be able to control that with your call and just rawr, do what we call a growl or a roar sound. And this is, this is an extremely emotional call, but you want to make sure that you know how to control that because there's a time to throw that out there that could really be effective for you. And so let's talk about how we get that. Um, we're just going to open it up and we're just going to go start out with a low and I'm going to just increase that air pressure real quickly and then I'm going to shut it off real quickly. So it's kind of like this. So I'm starting the call. The call is starting the grunt. I got it choked way down and then I just Boom, nail it with air pressure, release it, and shut it off with the airflow. Those are all sounds that a buck might make if he's worked up, he's in a fight, he's chasing a doe. They're, they're, I've seen them use this sound many different times um, in different situations. I was at a deer farm and I heard it when they were giving them shots. So they, it was, they were freaked out and they're like, Rawr! making that crazy sound. I've seen deer do it out in the natural, wild deer do it in the woods where they're on a doe, a hot doe, and she, she, just, she would sit down in some heavy cover and he couldn't get her up because he's trying to get her up. He wants to breed her and she's ready. He knows she's ready and he's just frustrated. And so he'll just kind of, he'll do that sound to try and do it like a little mini charge. I've seen them do that to chase other deer off, where they're up there, they're working them, and they're kind of chasing them around. They're not actually wanting, they're not actually fighting. The other deer's kind of afraid. He knows it, but he'll come in and he'll roar as he's chasing them off. I've seen, seen that sound in, made in those different situations. So it's something you want to practice, but I mean, I wouldn't go out in the woods and just start roar, just making all these crazy loud sounds, because this is as loud as a deer would ever get, ever. And so if you're going to be screaming that out on a calm day, I mean, they're going to be able to hear that probably pff, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards away. So if it's not right and if it's not natural and if it's not the right time of the year, you really can hurt yourself with a loud, overly aggressive call. Um, I am just not a fan of big, excessive volume. But this particular call takes a lot of volume, it, it, it is a, it's a loud call, and it can be very effective. So those are some of the tips and techniques that you can use when it comes to 
getting the sounds you want. And then you need to learn and understand the pieces of the language so that you can actually communicate. And then you need to learn the different scenarios that you might want to use some of these calls in. And it's a learning experience that never ends. And it's some um, different variations of different things you can do is almost endless. And so that's why there's no such thing as picking up a call, going out, calling in a deer and doing it. Oh, this works for me all the time because there's really no such thing as do the same thing all the time and you're going to be that very effective with those types of strategies. So practice with technique. Technique is huge so that you can do different things and uh, be the most successful and have the best chance that you possibly can. Your game call. We change the way that the industry looks at grunt calls. I don't think there's anything else anywhere near the performance level that this call can produce. When you can full a mature whitetail like that, your, your possibilities are really endless when you head to the woods. I use the extinguisher and the black racks. They're fantastic and I would not go in the woods without them in my arsenal. The extinguisher deer call and black rack rattling system are the highest rated deer communication systems of all time. Get yours today at illusionsystems.com. Order now.